It's been said by at least three people, Slavoj Žižek, Frederick Jameson, and Mark Fisher, that it's easier to imagine an end to the world than an end to capitalism. The point is, capitalism has become so embedded in all aspects of life, we're used to it. So we aren't striving for something better, just trying to make things more comfortable within this system. But capitalism is a period of history. It began, and like all other periods of history, it will end. What I'd like to know is how and when. Either way, we can start imagining it and working toward it today. I'm Chris, and this is what had to be said. Mark Fisher came up with the term capitalist realism to describe our situation. Having capitalism and related institutions around has become so normal, it's not considered realistic to attack the system as a whole. So we don't fight to abolish wage labor, but just for a higher minimum. We don't believe it's possible to eliminate poverty, but we can build more homeless shelters. We can't just end people's capacity to make war, but we can implement rules so people who start wars are occasionally held accountable for it. We couldn't possibly decolonize, but we can celebrate native culture and put their art in our government buildings while we spill oil on their sacred land. This realism is pervasive, like a fog, clouding our vision of everything beyond it. If you were brought up, surrounded by advertising and news, using money, learning to compete, learning to obey, it feels normal. A normal feels permanent. We might even think it's human nature. But we know from history that every social system has a beginning and comes to an end. Some of them evolve as the composition of the ruling elite evolves. For example, capitalism emerged as feudalism crumbled and spread around the world as imperialism waned. Some of them are replaced by similar systems under different names, like when slavery became prison labor. Other systems are torn down as popular revolt reaches a tipping point. So we know capitalism will end. In this video, you'll get some idea of my vision for a post-capitalist society, but mostly just through examples to get you started. What matters is your ideas and what you can do about them. This video is about how to begin to envision the end of capitalism and work toward it for yourself. The reason I think it's easy to imagine the end of capitalism is, if you can't already, you should be able to by the end of this video. People who live in isolated societies, or, or just who don't know much history, or don't know anything about other cultures, they have no reason to question their culture. There's nothing to contrast it with. But when you learn more about any subject, you realize how limited your perspective on it was before. So if you learn about different cultures, you can contrast them with the one you come from. And if you want, learn from it. And by the way, different times in the same country mean different cultures. If nothing else, you learn that there are other ways of doing things and seeing things. Just the fact that different people do things differently should mean to us that maybe our society hasn't got it all figured out. And if you look at history, you realize almost everything everyone has ever believed has been wrong, or else, you know, impossible to prove. Sure, some times and places are less ignorant, but for a culture in which millions of people believe vaccines cause autism, we use only 10% of our brains and there is no systemic racism, we're hardly one to brag. What we know or what we're used to is considered normal. Everything that's normal, that's assumed to be right, goes unquestioned. That's why so many people are on board with the vague idea of defunding the police, but they don't try to imagine a world without police, or if they do, they only picture everything on fire. They can't imagine governing themselves or working for themselves, because it's never been an option. 
What if we could meet people from very different cultures? Before capitalism, and, and to whatever extent possible during capitalism, humans have engaged in sharing, cooperation, and mutual aid. What would it be like if you met someone from a society that never developed capitalism, was never touched by imperialism, has never seen modern society? What could you learn from them? This hypothetical person might remark about how strange it is to see people living in the street when there are empty houses. For most of my life, I didn't question that situation because it was normal. They might not understand why we uproot native wildlife, plant grass, and then buy vegetables at the supermarket, whereas millions of people think that's the pinnacle of civilization. They would probably be horrified at most modern working conditions, or the surveillance state, or by the fact that we know capitalism is destroying the environment, and we don't do anything about it. The people who've lived their whole lives under capitalist realism find it hard to envision a free society. That makes sense. The scope of our imaginations is limited if we don't use them. The more questions we ask and really consider the answers, the more ideas we can come up with to solve problems. We're discouraged from asking questions and using our imaginations for most of our lives. Carl Sagan wrote he could see schools squeeze the imagination and curiosity out of us. And he could see it because the kids in grade one were full of questions about how things worked, while the kids in grade six had hardly any questions. One thing schools teach is to value authoritative or official information. We get used to looking for the one correct answer. Then we're primed for a life of accepting official information from the state and the media so we don't have to use our brains anymore. However much external factors are to blame, our imaginations are limited by what we know. Even science fiction and fantasy usually aren't radically different from our world, just set 50 years in the future or a thousand years in the past with magic powers we wish we had. You're probably used to one way of living, or, or maybe you've lived in two or more places, but their underlying assumptions about things like politics are pretty similar. Maybe. You might be able to think of some kind of reforms to the system, but reforms proposed from outside the system rarely go anywhere. And a lot of people know that, so they don't push for it. And because they've never really experienced or read about anything radically different, they don't realize something radically different is possible. In fact, the propaganda decides for us which proposals are radical by setting limits on what kind of politics is acceptable. It teaches us to describe anything the people who run things don't like as unrealistic, impossible, utopian, or against human nature. Then it relies on our natural aversion to new ideas to keep most of us closed to anything really different. And as times passed, every good idea has been shot down this way, leaving only the capitalist system as the apparent winner of history. As David Graeber put it in his book Direct Action, the murder of dreams can only lead to nightmares. But what if a dream were realistic, and in your interest, and in the interest of the people you know? Wouldn't it be worth considering? Isn't it worth escaping this nightmare? So do you want to destroy this system? There are many things you can do to start. For one, develop awareness. That means knowing yourself, but also understanding the systems you live under. They include culture, school, capitalism, colonialism, money, government, racism, and patriarchy. Your understanding of them needs to include their history and their effects. Where do these systems come from? What outcomes do they actually produce? Beyond what we take for granted, beyond all the rhetoric, what do they actually do? Who benefits and what's your place in them? The more you understand yourself and other people, the more you'll understand systems and vice versa. Likewise, the more educating and organizing you do, the better you'll understand systems and yourself and others. 
As you question and learn, you can envision the world you want to live in. Vision is sorely lacking on the left, as Zizek has pointed out. The purpose of communism is emancipation. It means a society without classes or money or states, so we don't have to serve some system where everyone shares in the product of the world rather than competing for whatever scraps the rich throw to us. Leftists who try to persuade their compatriots by talking about how great the USSR was, actually, or how great China is, actually, are shooting themselves and the whole movement in the foot. They present no vision because they have no vision. In the end, that means they have nothing to offer. And yet, you would think as revolutionaries they had the most to offer. Looking for meaning in your life, you could be part of the movement that finally confines capitalism to the trash can of history. You could be part of the generation that, that creates a free and fair society, one without hierarchy and war and poverty. No police, no bosses, no prisons, no slavery, and everyone has a home to keep them warm. Yes, you and me, we can make it happen in our lifetime. So don't look back or even sideways to other countries. Look forward. What are the benefits of a, a society in which capitalism is only a distant memory? After all, what, what good is all this criticism of the world if it's not supposed to lead anywhere? To feel smart? Again, communism means a classless, moneyless, stateless society, at least to me. That has never existed in a modern society. If we're suggesting a revolution that will make things slightly better, not many people will be on board. But you don't need to identify with scary words like communism and anarchism to want to build a free society. So you don't need to use those words to share your vision for the world. Ideas are just tools, and you can adapt them to your situation. Educate yourself, and for God's sake, educate others. Anyone who will listen can work with you to develop a vision and a plan for getting there. You can share your vision with people, but we can only achieve it together. Likewise, if you like the vision they present, you can join with other people who are working toward it. It's way in the future, so it's okay to get there bit by bit. What might the steps be? I don't know, for example... First, someone drops a match outside the Minneapolis Police Department, which turns into a whole movement against racism for abolishing the police and prisons and eventually the whole racist state and replacing them with caring communities and mutual aid. So like 2020. People start thinking about decolonization, owning the means of production collectively, what freedom really means, and as such, what a free society would look like. Ends and means would have to match, so neighborhoods and workplaces would start governing themselves. There should be widespread disrespect for and undermining of authority and the institutions of power, like the law and the police. There should be strikes and sabotage and walkouts and refusing to follow orders. These steps wouldn't come after the revolution. They are the revolution. And hey, you might have come up with a different vision, but we can probably still work together. If your thing is indigenous sovereignty, great, let's work on that. If you want to end wars, hey, so do I. If you want to end racism, great, that's a big part of this. If you just don't want to work so much, good. Neither do most people. We should be doing all these things. So even if one of those is your priority, it's all part of the same struggle against the same system. We should support each other. And it'll probably need to happen all over the world because big changes in one place will lead other states to support the local power elite or even invade to reestablish the state. So your vision will need to understand power on a global level, not just a local one. But that'll come with working with people in different groups and across borders. You don't have to know everything to start. Just take that first step. Think you're ready?